Seven common pills that may be quietly destroying your heart. Every year, doctors write millions of prescriptions with the promise of protecting health. But hidden inside that promise is a dangerous truth. Some of the most common pills handed to seniors may actually weaken the organ they're meant to protect, the heart. These aren't rare or experimental drugs. They're medications found in almost every medicine cabinet. Pills for reflux, for pain, for cholesterol, for blood pressure. Leading cardiologists and heart surgeons now warn that when taken long-term or without careful monitoring, they can quietly drain nutrients, stiffen arteries, trigger dangerous arrhythmias, and even raise the risk of heart failure. So in this video, I'll reveal seven pills that could be destroying senior hearts if not taken properly and under proper supervision. Each one of these is backed by research, each one hiding risks most patients never hear in the doctor's office. And don't miss number one, it's the most prescribed pill in the world and the silent side effects may shock you. The shocking part, according to the American Heart Association, more than 70% of adults over 60 take at least one of these three drugs every single day. Most assume the side effects they're feeling are just aging, when in reality, the pill itself may be the silent culprit. Let's start with number seven. For millions of seniors, diabetes pills are a daily lifeline. So that's important. But some of these drugs, particularly older ones like rosiglitaz, come with a hidden cost. Serious damage to the heart is possible. Research published in the New England Journal of Medicine found that patients taking it faced a 43% higher risk of heart attack and a significant increase in risk of heart failure hospitalizations. The danger lies in how these drugs work. They make the body more sensitive to insulin, but at the same time, they cause fluid retention and increase overall fluid volume. This extra volume forces the heart to pump harder, which for a senior with an already weakened heart and blocked arteries can tip the balance toward sudden heart failure. Newer diabetes drugs, such as SGLT2 inhibitors, have actually been shown in large trials to protect the heart while lowering blood sugar. Furthermore, the American Diabetes Association strongly recommends daily physical activity, walking, building muscle strength, and reducing refined carbohydrates to dramatically improve blood sugar control without adding extra fluid stress to the heart. Pills prescribed to correct irregular heartbeats can actually, in certain cases, make the problem worse. The cardiac arrhythmia suppression trial revealed that drugs in this class could actually increase the risk of sudden death when given to patients with prior heart attacks. Medications like amiodarone can slow the heartbeat too much, leading to fatigue and dizziness. More dangerously, flucanide and similar drugs can act as pro-arrhythmic, meaning they trigger more severe lethal arrhythmias in the heart that's already damaged or weak. What begins as a treatment ends up becoming a threat. Today, cardiologists often turn to modern non-pharmacological rhythm control strategies, such as catheter ablation, which targets the source of the electrical misfiring. For eligible patients, ablation has been shown to be effective and may reduce the long-term dependency on risky drugs. Steroids. They're often prescribed to seniors for inflammation, autoimmune diseases, or asthma. A large study published in the British Medical Journal found that seniors using steroids long-term were two times more likely to develop cardiovascular disease than those who didn't. Steroids make the body retain salt and water. This is not just cosmetic swelling. This extra fluid increases blood pressure and forces the heart muscle to pump against higher resistance. Over time, this constant strain thickens the heart muscle and stiffens the arteries, creating the perfect setup for hypertension and heart failure. For non-life-threatening inflammation, experts emphasize the use of non-steroidal options like physical therapy, cold, heat, compresses, or targeted lifestyle changes dietary inflammation reduction. If steroids are necessary, research supports using the lowest effective dose for the shortest possible duration to minimize cardiovascular strain. Now let's talk about beta blockers. Beta blockers have saved countless lives, but in certain older adults, they may do more harm than good. Increasing risks of bradycardia, which is a slow heart rhythm, falls, and hospitalizations. Beta blockers work by slowing the heart rate. While this is helpful for overworked hearts, if the heart is already frail, slowing it too much can reduce the amount of blood and oxygen reaching vital organs. It's what we call low cardiac output. This leads to fatigue and dizziness, often misdiagnosed as just aging and getting older. 
Research showed frail seniors on beta blockers were more likely to develop a heart failure compared to younger, stronger patients. American Heart Association confirms that lifestyle interventions, specifically a low sodium diet like the DASH diet, and achieving 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise like walking every week and strength training is helpful. These approaches attack high blood pressure by regulating fluid volume, not by dangerously slowing the heart's pumping action. Acid reflux pills. These are amongst the most commonly prescribed drugs. Research from Stanford University revealed that PPIs, proton pump inhibitors, were associated with a roughly 20% increased risk in the rate of subsequent heart attacks. PPIs aggressively block stomach acid, which is essential for absorbing key heart minerals like magnesium. When magnesium levels plummet, the heart's electrical system becomes unstable, leading to palpitations and dangerous irregular rhythms. That's why these levels must be watched carefully. Furthermore, some studies suggest PPIs may interfere with the production of nitric oxide, a compound needed to keep arteries relaxed and flexible. For many, the need for PPIs can be eliminated or reduced. Evidence shows that elevating the head of the bed, avoiding late night meals, and reducing intake of common trigger foods like caffeine, alcohol, and acidic foods are proven effective strategies to manage reflux and allow doctors to safely taper the medication. Painkillers like ibuprofen and naproxen can silently strain the heart. According to the Food and Drug Administration, non-aspirin NSAIDs increase the chance of heart attack or stroke, even in early use. NSAIDs reduce inflammation by blocking enzymes. Unfortunately, those same enzymes also help keep the lining of the blood vessels healthy. When they're shut down, blood pressure rises and arteries stiffen. The blood may also become thicker, creating an ideal environment for clot formation, which is why regular use is linked to a higher chance of cardiac arrest. For mild to moderate pain, doctors often recommend alternating with acetaminophen, especially if there are no liver issues, which does not carry the same cardiovascular risk. For chronic joint pain, physical therapy and the use of heat or cold therapy are proven effective alternatives, allowing the patient to adhere to the crucial rule, the lowest effective dose for the shortest possible time. And finally, number one, Statins. These are the most prescribed cholesterol-lowering drugs in the world. They block the pathway that creates coenzyme Q10, a compound every heart cell needs to produce energy. Statins inhibit an enzyme in the liver that produces cholesterol. However, this same pathway is responsible for producing CoQ10. Without adequate CoQ10, the heart muscle cannot produce sufficient energy, leading to weakness, fatigue, and muscle pain that can extend to the heart muscle itself. Long-term use has been linked to impaired heart muscle function. For patients with borderline risk, lifestyle changes can be highly effective. The NIH supports the efficacy of a diet rich in soluble fiber oats, beans, and therapeutic doses of plant sterols and stanols for modest cholesterol reduction. For patients who require statins, research on CoQ10 supplementation has been explored by some cardiologists as a way to support muscle function and counteract the depletion effect. We've just uncovered seven of the most common pills sitting in senior medicine cabinets. The research is clear. Long-term use without careful monitoring carries hidden cardiovascular risks. Do not stop taking or alter the dose of any medications based on this information. This video is for educational and awareness purposes only. Speak to your physician about these medicines and any concerns or symptoms you may be having. Remember, always consult your doctor before you're making any changes. Every patient and every body is unique. Your heart deserves nothing less than professional, tailored care. I'm Dr. John Chuback, board-certified cardiovascular surgeon, and I will see you in the next video.